Hello everyone, so today I will be talking about conformity to social roles and this is Simbardo's research and I'll be following along with the AQA psychology textbook with the girl with the green hair on. So I've just put together my normal slide of things you need to know and be able to recognise. So something that I think a lot of students don't really think about when they think of Simbardo's study is social roles and now on the specification it does mention that you need to know what social roles are so we'll have a look at that uh, you also need to know that Zimbardo relates to conformity sometimes students get this modeled up with obedience but Zimbardo is conformity and also Zimbardo conducted his research in 1971 so what are social roles? These are the parts that people play as members of social groups. So some examples are being a student, a teacher or a parent. And these particular roles in society come with expectations such that students should be respectful, whilst parents should be caring or play a caring role. So I always put the aims in of Zimbardo's research. It's important just to remember why he was conducting it, what he was aiming to find. So what Zimbardo wanted to see was whether people would conform to the roles of prisoners and guards when placed in a mock prison. So whether if you've been given the identity of a prisoner, you've been told you're a prisoner, you go into a prison, which isn't a real prison, would you still act the same way as a normal prisoner? So Zimbardo's procedure, it's kind of likely this would be asked as a six marker, or if you'd got an essay on Zimbardo, it would form your basis of AO1 marks. You're looking at potentially six marks here, so you'd want six points at least. So what Zimbardo did was that he set up a mock prison in the basement of Stanford University. He advertised for volunteers and now hopefully you can see that a volunteer sample isn't necessarily the best. It can attract people who've got spare time on their hands, which isn't a positive necessarily. But what actually Zimbardo did was that he selected those that were emotionally stable after he'd conducted intensive psychological testing and students were randomly assigned to the roles of guard and prisoner. And what that does is that it isolates those variables out, which means that the findings are much more accurate. It's much more likely that they are reflective because he controlled for those variables. Prisoners were arrested in their own homes by the police and then delivered to the prison. So it was quite realistic, but in a sense that is critiqued in the AO3. They had 16 rules to follow and these were all enforced by the guards and they worked in shifts three at a time. The prisoners names were never used. It was just their numbers. The kind of like their identity was completely wiped and to underline the roles, the guards were given their own uniform and they had a wooden club, handcuffs, keys and mirror shades. And the guards were told that they had complete control over the prisoners. So the findings were that the guards' behaviour became a threat to the prisoners. And because of the in intensity of the situation, the study was stopped after six days as opposed to the 14 that were initially intended. The prisoners rebelled within two days and they started to rip their uniforms, shouting and swearing at the guards who retaliated with fire extinguishers. The guards employed something called divide and rule tactics and this is where they played the prisoners off against one another. And after the rebellion was completely put down, prisoners became subdued, depressed and anxious. And one prisoner was actually released on day one because they had signs of psychological disturbance. Two more were released on day four, and then one prisoner went on a hunger strike. The guards became much more brutal, and they seemed to enjoy the power they had over the prisoners. Now we have the evaluations. This will form your A. So the strength of the Stanford Prison Experiment was that there was this high level of control. So as I mentioned about the variables of the participants being randomly assigned to their roles and those being picked that were emotionally stable, it ruled out any individual personality differences. So that is a strength. And if the guards behaved differently, but the roles were 
chosen by chance. It can be assumed their behaviour was due to the pressure of the situation as opposed to their individual personality. So this control increases the internal validity of the study and therefore we can be much more confident in drawing conclusions. Okay, so we've now got the lack of realism, which is both a limitation and a strength. So on the limitation side of things, what researchers have found is that participants were actually basing their roles on brutal characters from films, such as Cool Hand Luke. So what they'd seen in films was how they behaved in the prison. And it was because they had stereotypes and they based their characters off this, which is what other researchers have argued. But actually, Zimbabwe revealed that much of the conversations that were happening in the prison were actually about prison life. And there was 90% in total. And this is quantitative data. So what I mean by that is numerical data. And that was gathered throughout the study. And even to the extent of prisoner 416 expressing the view that the prison was a real one, but it was just run by psychologists as opposed to the government. And because of that true belief of it feeling like a prison to the participants, it has a high degree of internal validity. Now we've got the role of dispositional influences. So what we mean by dispositional is individual personality differences. So Froome in 1973 has accused Zimbardo of exaggerating the power of the situation to influence behaviour, minimising the role of dispositional factors. So what we've actually found is that a third were behaving brutally, a third were applying rules fairly, but the rest actually were sympathising with the prisoners and supporting them by giving privileges such as cigarettes. So maybe the situation wasn't as destructive and as violent as Zimbardo was expressing. So as you suggest that Zimbardo was exaggerating the situation of people conforming to social roles and the differences in behaviour show that they were able to exercise right and wrong choices and by that we mean the prisoners were able to do so. Furthermore, another limitation is a lack of research support. So Reicher and Haslam in 2006 conducted a partial replication of Zimbardo's study on the BBC and they called it the BBC Prison Study. Now what they found was entirely different to Zimbardo's findings. So remember that Zimbardo found that the prisoners behaved not very brutally, whereas the guards were the ones that were enforcing torture on the prisoners. But in the BBC prison study, they find that the prisoners take control of the mock prison and subject the guards to a campaign of harassment. And what we can link this to is a different theory, which is social identity theory. And this can explain the outcome. So when we say social identity theory, that's how you associate yourself with a group in the sense of you feel like a member of a social group. And in this instance, the prisoners were able to do that whilst the guards didn't. So they ad actively identified themselves as members of a social group. Now, whilst Zimbardo claimed that participants were naturally conforming to the roles, the BBC challenges this viewpoint and says that they show that the conformity to social roles is not necessarily natural. So, in fact, there is some evidence of this in the Stanford Prison Experiment. So, in the, in the actual real experiment by Zimbardo, some guards actively try to support the prisoners, as we were saying. We've got one third that are brutal, one third that employ the, the rules as they've been told to do so. And then the rest are all trying to give privileges. So they're trying to support the prisoners. And that was presumably because they just never identified with their role. Additionally, we've got these ethical issues. So Zimbardo was playing a dual role in the study. So he was acting as the experimenter, but also as the superintendent in some instances. So there is an example of a student who spoke to Zimbardo about leaving the study as his role being a superintendent. Now, he had a duty of care towards his participants because he was an experimenter. But because he was acting as the superintendent, he had this dual role, in a sense, 
and the conversation was as though the student was a prisoner actually asking to be released and that shouldn't have happened like that so Zimbardo was responding as a superintendent rather than a researcher and he had responsibility towards his participants so his participants were exposed to harm and Zimbardo should have given up one of his roles he could have remained lead researcher detaching himself from the study and if he'd done that he would have been a much more objective about what was happening to his participants he wasn't being able to see how much torture they were going through and how much stress they were under because he was also involved in the situation he wasn't outside of it and so that is an ethical problem so I've now attached an AS 2018 exam question which relates to Zimbardo and here we've got describe and evaluate the procedure of Zimbardo's research into social roles and this is for eight marks I would urge you to have a go at this as always do practice the questions I do think this is the way to learn a lot of the information by applying it into questions it really does ingrain it into your brain so I've now attached the mark scheme. What I want you to really pay attention to is where it says AO1 for four marks and AO3 for four marks. This is an equal split because it is an AS psychology paper. But if this was an A level paper, the marks would be split differently because as you get into your second year or in your second year, you're expected to be able to evaluate more so than what you do in your first year. So what would happen is the marks would change and the split would be three for AO1 and five for AO3. And it is also important to have a look at what the levels are. It depends what you're aiming for. If you're aiming for a level three, look how that differs to level four. So we've got, there is some effective evaluation in here, whereas evaluation is effective in the top level. And you just need to make sure you're practicing those peel structure paragraphs and that will really get you the marks and also think of your own evaluation points if you can Exp expand beyond the textbook could you think of anything that would critique that procedure but it, remember also with evaluation it doesn't have to be negative so we were talking about the random allocation which was happening in the procedure how participants were randomly assigned and it was controlling variables that is evaluating the study it's saying it's got good control so that would be one that you can use I think some students sometimes think they have to go for uh, limitations because that is tends to be what the book gives more of but no you can also give a strength of the study so here we have some possible evaluation points at the bottom ethical issues it's so good to have a look at these uh, mark schemes because it just gives more examples so we've got sample bias lack of ecological validity mundane realism demand characteristics yet good so we can include all of that possible content it gives as well and we were talking about those look stopped after six days it is vital to include things like that here at the bottom I love looking at this bit because it's where so many students will fall with their marks if they don't read the question properly description and evaluation of procedures so sometimes you get people evaluating anything uh, but it has to be evaluation of Zimbardo study or a study that Zimbardo's done uh, previously so you would have to know those it has to relate to the procedure of Zimbardo study or another study that was conducted by Zimbardo there we go there's the green arrow really think about it because it wants the study the actual procedure nothing else it doesn't want you to comment on the findings which is where other people can fall down other students as always thank you for listening and the best of luck with the rest of your revision